Hey everybody, welcome back. As always, we're here each and every day with a brand new Cabral concept. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the thyroid and new testing or new markers that people are starting to ask about. So whenever there's questions, I am here to do my best to help answer those, especially in terms of functional medicine at home lab testing. So one of the questions that has been coming in is, is there any validity to T1 and T2 thyroid markers? Because Right now, if you're not familiar, we'll talk about what we do thyroid test in all doctors thyroid test, which is T4, T3, and TSH. So we're going to talk about those in a minute. But why would someone test for their thyroid in the first place? Like, what's the thyroid do? Well, the thyroid is literally the epicenter of your metabolism. And I don't talk about that just in terms of weight gain or weight loss. I talk about it in terms of energy input, output, converting food to energy, heat in the body, so thermogenics, and overall, um, well, I'm going to talk about it right now, but literally movement circulation through the body. So when something is off with the thyroid, your body begins to immediately tell you through symptoms. So I have an entire four-hour course on everything thyroid and how to heal your thyroid A to Z. It's for hypothyroidism, so low thyroid, as well as Hashimoto's. You can find that at stephencabral.com slash courses. So stephencabral.com slash courses, just click on the thyroid one. It is everything you've ever wanted to know without having to read 12 books on the thyroid. So that's that. If you want free podcasts on thyroid, I have an entire whole section just on thyroid healing. And that's at stephencabral.com slash podcast. Just scroll through the images at the top, give you about 50 podcasts just on the thyroid. So your choice, however you want to look more into it. But the thyroid is crucial in terms of improving your overall health. Because here are the symptoms that many people suffer, but yet never attribute it to their thyroid. And the thyroid is easily fixable. It honestly is. So there's fatigue. There's weight gain. There's cold intolerance, meaning cold hands and cold feet, poor circulation. Dry skin, hair loss, specifically thinning on the crown of the head and thinning of the outside of the eyebrow, constipation, depression or low mood, a lowered heart rate or overall sluggish movement of the body. You can start to get joint pain. And for women, there can be fertility issues or irregular menstrual cycles. So absolutely paramount that we look into this because eventually it can even start to look, it can even lead to things such as elevated levels of cholesterol, bone loss, et cetera. So both important for men and for women, women unfortunately suffer from low thyroid, one out of five. So literally walking down the street, one out of five women, by the time they get into their mid to later twenties and one out of 10 men. So one out of five or two out of 10 for women, one out of 10 for men. Important, crucial that we look at this. The number one lab test is called the stress mood and metabolism test because it looks at the, the involvement, the synchronicity of how the adrenal glands with cortisol and the sex hormones with estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, and DHEA intertwine with the thyroid. And that lab looks at your TSH levels, which is thyroid stimulating hormone. That's basically your hypothalamus telling your pituitary gland in your brain to tell your thyroid to make more hormone. And then we have T4, right? So that's the main one we're looking at, free T4. And then we have free T3, which is ultimately what we want that thyroid to convert to because that's the main usable form of thyroid hormone. The majority of that conversion is happening in the liver, but it happens in other cells and areas of the body as well. And then we also test for TPO antibodies because that is a potential sign, not here to provide any medical diagnosis, treatment plans, cures, or diagnosis, but it's a potential sign that you may have Hashimoto's. And so we look at those, and that is exactly what functional medicine doctors and integrative health practitioners do, as well as, of course, naturopathic doctors. So what then is this T1 and T2 if we're not using T3 and T4? A lot of people are asking about that. So it is because they do exist. So 
What's the most important thyroid number to look for? It's T3. That's because that is the main activated form of thyroid hormone. It's said that it accounts for about 70% of all active thyroid. So you could have just out of range TSH, like a 2.5. You may have normal T4, but you may have low T3. And so you have all of the signs of low thyroid. Many of the symptoms that we just spoke about before, maybe two, maybe three, right? If you were nodding your head, oh, I have two or three of those. Well, your doctor likely is only testing TSH. And so the range for TSH, unfortunately, is 0.5 to 5 in conventional medicine. So it's not until you reach a 5.1 that your conventional medicine doctor will start to do something. They'll then send you to an endocrinologist. The endocrinologist will do what? Well, they'll simply prescribe pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical thyroid, right? Levothyroxine or in others, like, but that's the main one. And so the issue is, is that if you had run a lab that looks at free T3, you would know, oh, there's an issue converting T4 to T3. I'm not going to go over the conversion and why that um, gets blocked in the body, but I've done that in my course and on all the free podcasts. And so all of that is fixable. It's also in the rain barrel effect. Okay. So should we start testing though for T1 and T2? Well, what is T1? It is mono iodothyronine. And what's T2? Diiodothyronine. T3, as we spoke before, is triiodothyronine. So it's why does this matter? Well, we're really talking about molecules. So we've got one. Well, again, I'm going to just keep this at like a base level of one, T1. Two mo molecules. That's di two, right? T2, diiodo. So we're looking at iodine. All right. And then three, we have three. So what is though T1? Well, T1 right now is said, there's very limited research. I'm going to state that, but I'm going to come back to it. Very limited research on T1, T2. Very limited. But it may support overall cellular thyroid health. That means T1 may actually be a marker for the cellular health, the cells themselves inside of the thyroid. So let me grab my model here. We've got Walter. Walter, you can see here, if you're watching this on video, right below essentially the Adam's apple or larynx space area is the thyroid. Small butterfly-based gland. And it is possible that T1 looks at the overall cellular health of the thyroid. And if it's off, well, maybe that means there's some cellular oxidative stress, which of course we work on either way. But not a lot of research, not a lot is even known, well, what to be done then if it, if it is off. T2 has a little bit more research and has a bit more of an active role that we know of. And it can actually and potentially influence mitochondrial energy. So ATP production as well as metabolic rate. And keep in mind, metabolic rate is not just about calories burned. It's about energy produced. It is about thermogenics and heat as well. So that's important. All right. T2 also may affect fat metabolism, body temperature, and energy homeostasis. Now, you may have already thought about that because we just talked about energy, right? We talked about metabolic rate in the body. So what I want to share is this, is that because I know I've had a lot of IHPs asking about that, and this is why I wanted to bring this up. There is no standard lab testing right now to test T1 and T2. Even if there was standard lab testing, there is not anything different that we know of that we would do if T1 and T2 were off. First, there are no, there's no good lab testing for it. Second, there's no standardized ranges because there's very limited data. And three, even if they were off, there is, there's nothing that we know of that we would do differently to support the thyroid naturally. So, how do you improve your overall thyroid? Again, I can't go through every single mineral, but again, it's all out there and it, it, I have it all in the free podcasts on the courses and I'll link up to it um, from stephencabell.com slash 3176. But you need to make sure that you reduce oxidative stress. That's a big one, right? So if you have, even if you have high thyroid to, moving towards Graves, so Graves, Hashimoto's, and specifically low hypothyroidism, low thyroid, you could be missing vitamins and minerals, right? That's a big one. You could be missing essential fatty acids. You could be missing antioxidants. 
These are all crucial. But you also may be dealing with higher levels of inflammation from heavy metal damage, leaky gut, which leads to endotoxemia, and all of those need to be fixed. So for our thyroid healing protocol, there is nothing more that we would add, even if there is a T1, T2 imbalance, because we're always looking at what's the underlying root cause. So the underlying root cause is going to be either a deficiency, vitamins, minerals, could be iodine, could be vitamin A, could be zinc, could be selenium, could be B6, right? So that's why you test for those. And that's a deficiency. Oh, too, too little omega-3s to too many omega-6s, right? So what are the toxicities? Could be omega-6s. Could be leaky gut. Could be food sensitivities to dairy, casein. Could be to gluten. Could be to soy. Could be to eggs, right? What if you have heavy metals? What if you have bromine or arsenic or mercury or uh, chlorine exposure? All of those lower thyroid. So remember, there's always an answer. Literally, there is always an answer. And healing your thyroid, absolutely, and I would say routinely, be something that you're able to fix within three to six months. The only people that aren't are that have had their thyroid surgically removed, it's been damaged because of radiation, or uh, part of it has been destroyed from an autoimmune issue. But for the most part, even if, if there's some thyroid there, you can get it back into working function. I wouldn't say that if I didn't believe it, and not only that, see it in my practice thousands of times. So the best place to start, if you only want run one lab, is the stress mood and metabolism test. If you know that you have gut-based issues, potential food sensitivities, potential heavy metals, or you have an autoimmune issue, then I highly recommend running the big five. So it would be big five, and if you could only run one, it would be the stress mood and metabolism test, which is part of the big five. That would give you all your hormones. So hopefully this is helpful. Wanted to give you a place to start for our um, IHP integrative health practitioners and all the practitioners we teach. Uh, we have no, we're not going to start running T1 and T2 anytime soon. One, there's no good reliable testing. Number two, there's no standard range for T1, T2. Uh, and third, there's not a lot of great science to exactly how they affect the body. And for the most part, if T3 is active, TSH is normal, most likely the precursors are all balanced themselves as well. So hopefully this was helpful. Again, I'll link up all the shows we can, the courses, everything. I can link up the labs as well. I just can't link up the actual protocols we use. Um, all of those will be at stephencabral.com slash 3176 for the show notes. Take care, everybody. Do feel free to share the show with anyone you believe it could serve. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.